Today we're gonna make steak au poivre. Here are the ingredients, Tara. <laughs> Dying laughing. I just did this like intro like seven times. It's a really simple dish. Let's get into it right now. So here's a beautiful steak. This is a strip, New York strip prime from Costco. And I'm only doing one strip right now for you. We're gonna make the same amount of sauce in the print recipe. I did two strips. So we need to trim this though, and we'll do that in a second. Here are the remaining ingredients. This is a special ingredient that I ordered from Amazon because I could not find it in any store. These are green peppercorns. This is from the same plant, the green ones and the black ones. These are like peeled and roasted, I believe. Don't quote me on that. And these are the raw ones and these will go bad very quickly. So they're in a solution. Anyway, we're gonna use one tablespoon of these at the end to finish. If you don't have them, you don't need it. Black peppercorns, I have two tablespoons. You don't have to have an exact amount here. We're gonna crush these and we're just gonna coat each side of our steak. Cognac, that is strong stuff an expensive liquor. If you don't want to spend that much money, and I think the bottle we got was, what was it, Hennessy or something? Hennessy, yeah. You could use a cheap brandy. Like, you could use like a $20 bottle of brandy or, or less. It honestly tastes and smells almost the same to my, you know, novice palate. We have one cup of cream. We have one shallot and a little bit of butter, one tablespoon to finish. Essentially, all we're gonna do is sear a steak. We're gonna make a sauce. We're gonna eat it. It's the easiest thing in the world. This is a large steak. Uh, normally a strip you'll buy will be a little bit not as thick and yeah, you could probably do it all in the pan. What I'm asking you to do is set your oven to 350 degrees and set a rack in the middle. There's too much fat here, okay? If we, had, if we were outdoors, outside with our grill, I would just leave all this fat on. Maybe I would just only trim a little bit. We have to trim more of it now but we gotta get a lot of fat off of here. We will turn the steak on its side, but still, it's still too much. It'll just take, it'll take too long. We tend to not do expensive stuff on this channel, so that's why you don't see me doing a lot of steaks. You know, you're never gonna see Sip and Feast break out Wagyu beef or anything like that. You know, I would never do that to you. I just think that disenfranchises so many of you, and I actually want you to make the recipes. All right, this is trimmed up beautifully. It'll, we'll be able to get it off and we're gonna season it up. That's a big shallot. We can use all this. You gotta make sure that you get everything off. You might even have to peel the next layer. So you really don't get a lot with your money with a shallot, but you don't really need that much here. It's, it has a nice flavor. Okay, same thing as cutting an onion, just like I kept the root end there and then I'm just gonna go like this, just slide my knife kind of back and forth. And I just made like very narrow strips here. And then I'm just gonna really mince it really finely. Now you got these little pieces. If you got any like leftover pieces that didn't cut, just take your knife through it. Okay, pepper. I got two tablespoons here. So I think I used two tablespoons for the print recipe that I have two steaks. So we might not need all this, but you might as well have more than not enough. It's very hard to crack these peppercorns, like really hard. So just, you know, use your mallet. Barely did a thing. Look at that. So, so Tara was like, just go like this. You know, that might work. I took one of the towel pieces off, so I think I have less now. So the pepper, when it hits the pan, is mellows it completely. That's the whole point why you put it on both sides and sear it. If you don't do that, and you kind of like add it at the end, you're gonna have this massive amount of pepper. So yeah, the pepper has to be seared. Okay, so I put all my pepper back on that plate. I dried off the plate. I just want everything to be dry. Dry off your steak, everything is dry. Let's salt this well on all sides. This is diamond kosher salt. So I really want to get a nice coating. Okay, and the other side, you know, you could dry brine this ahead of time if you want, which, which is better to do meaning you just salt overnight your steak, your pork chops, chicken, whatever. It's always better that way, but it's fine this way too. So I spread the pepper out to the sides. Let's just push it down right in there. See that nice crust on that side there? Okay, spread this pepper back out again as best you can. And let's do the other side. Don't worry about using all the pepper. You're gonna have leftover pepper here. I have a stainless steel pan, 12 inch pan. I'm gonna put it on my burner and we're gonna heat this up to medium heat, maybe even a touch less than medium. Not screaming hot. 
you're cooking the steak for four minutes per side. If you do it screaming hot, you're gonna, you, you'll be ruined at two minutes, okay? We're gonna get a be beautiful crust on here. Your crust is, ol is only contingent on one thing, whether or not your steak was dry before you put it in here. Doesn't matter about really the temperature of the pan. Let it heat up for three minutes. We're using stainless steel. So I'm gonna set my stopwatch. We're gonna do four minutes per side, just so we get even cooking. We'll also turn them on its side. I'll be able to determine, determine at that point if my steak is only 105 degrees, then it's not good enough. We'll finish it in the oven. I like my steak about 125 to 135, which is around rare, you know, to too close to medium rare. This is vegetable oil. Actually, you know, I'm not gonna use vegetable oil. I'm gonna put down a couple tablespoons here. Don't worry, we can remove it after, okay? We just don't want our steak to uh, burn. Just put it down like this and just leave it alone. Don't do anything else. It's been two minutes. By not doing anything, and I'm right in the center of the heat here, it's gonna get a nice, nice color on our steak. Just give it time. Don't be tempted to do anything. It's the same principle if you're outside, you know, on your grill. It's almost four minutes. Let's see how this looks. Okay, see a beautiful, beautiful steak. I hope you can see that. Let's just go right back on the other side. So another four minutes, and then we'll turn up onto the fat side. The way a strip always is, kind of goes like this, so it's hard to get, get it all. And then we can check it. You, know, you can use your thumb, you know, your fingers if you're very adept, or you can just take an instant read, check it. This dish is all about to your liking. If you like your steak medium or medium well or well, you gotta cook it to that temp. See this, I'm right in the middle there, it's 88 degrees, and this is eight minutes I've cooked it, so it's too thick because it's a Costco one, all right? So we're gonna stand this on its side for about a minute to get that fat edge, and one side of the strip is always has that more fat edge that we cut off of. So I still got my clock running, I've been 37 seconds that way. I'll do about 45 seconds to a minute on my sides, and we'll put it back in the oven maybe three, four minutes, uh, and we can check it. If you have a, a probe one, you can do that if you want, you know, if you're worried. Say you're doing like four of them, you know, you're making a big dinner party, probe one of them, because they're all about the same thickness, put it in the oven. All right, we'll go on the other side. See now, see now the edges is perfect there. This is easy to do, guys, to cook a steak inside. Again, your biggest problem is gonna be lack of ventilation. I did this on medium, lower than medium heat, and look at how brown that is. Do not do screaming hot. You will absolutely ruin your meal completely. You'll just have an, you'll have a burnt outside thing, and you'll have it'll still be extremely rare. Okay, see that side here? This one raw. Just go like this. Try not to squeeze the steak so you don't squeeze the juice out of it. Just do a little light, light grab. Do about 30 seconds on each of these ends here. We're at about 106, if you can see that. I'm gonna put this in the oven for about four minutes on 350. That should do the trick. So it's been like four and a half minutes, let's see. Looks like we just put it in for another four minutes. So let's check it out. You do a little feel if you're very adept at that, but you know, a lot of times it's hard. Just wanna get it right in the middle of that steak. What do we got? Yeah, 130, oh, maybe a little high. Oh, better get it out, I think it's still good. Let's just get it in this clean pan here. I'm just gonna lightly tent it to keep it warm. I have some clean paper towels here that I just bundled up. I just wanna get rid of, and by the way, since this was in the oven, just keep this over here so you know and other people know too. I'm just tapping up, getting a lot of that fat out of there because we don't need all of it. Okay, and we're gonna put the shallot in. I'm gonna turn my heat back to about medium. A little sprinkle, salt. Just go like this with wooden, flat edge of your wooden spoon. Now listen, we did medium heat here. You can see our pan is fine. We got a beautiful crust on our steak, but like, if, say like we did scorching hot, like how recipe blogger number 9,000 told you to do. The pan is probably gonna be beyond burnt, especially if you use a cast iron pan. It's gonna be black, okay? Like black with burntness. Just moderate your heat now. You know, if you're too high now, you lower it. But you know, if you're in that scenario where that happens, you can deglaze, you can test deglaze, you can taste it. If it's burnt, you know, adios, start with a new pan, make your sauce right now. But by using this pan here still, we're getting all this nice, you know, nice brown bits uh, where we seared our steak. So it's more flavor in here. These don't need that long, these only take like two, two minutes. 
And you got some of the peppercorns that fell off in here, which are totally fine. The pepper mellows. It's just like Paposo with all that black pepper. It looked like it was nuts how much pepper I was putting in. But in the end, very mellow taste. Safety right now, turn off your heat. Don't keep your burner on. You know, when you're using cognac, it can flame up. And I got a camera right here that you can't see and a microphone and that could all go bye-bye. So I'm gonna pull it off the heat and I'm gonna put it in just a touch so it doesn't start flaming. Sometimes even under that scenario, it will ignite. Now light your, your burner back to medium, a little bit higher than medium heat, more like medium high. Continue to scrape it up any remaining brown bits and we're gonna reduce this brandy, cognac, whatever you decide to use, we're gonna reduce it by about half. Okay, we want basically most of it evaporated out of here, maybe three quarter. It's only gonna take a couple minutes because all I put in there was a third of a cup of cognac. See that, how much reduction we're getting here? That's perfect, okay? You can lower your heat now to about medium cream. That's one cup of cream. Whisk it in. And we're gonna bring this to a simmer, bubbling, and it will start to thicken up. And we have plenty of sauce here. This recipe, this sauce amount was for two steaks. Just gonna let this come up to a simmer. It's starting to bubble. Just whisk it in still and this cream is gonna start thickening. Listen, if you over thicken this, you can just put a tiny touch of water, like an ounce at a time, and it'll thin it right out. But right now, it's too thin. We need it to be thicker than this. The optimal amount is where it coats the steak and like it doesn't really come off. This is kind of like your standard dish that pretty much doesn't get changed up much. Maybe the ratios of uh, brandy or cognac to cream. All right, see how it's thickening? And don't season it yet because as it's thickening, it's gonna concentrate. We'll season it right at the end, finally, before we put it on the steak. Okay, it's almost there. We can add our green peppercorns. Keep whisking. Nice and thick now, all right? Look at that. See that? Okay, see how it's coating the back of my spoon there? All right, turn it off. Pull this, get this burner out of the way, and I got one tablespoon of butter. Whisk that in, it's gonna make it even richer, like it's not rich enough, you know? Give it a little taste and we're gonna season if we need any salt. Mmm, pinch of salt. Definitely not any pepper. So right now we're gonna plate it up for the taste tester. So it's about 135 internal, which, you know, is nice. I mean, I think it's a really good consistency. There oh, it is. So good. All right, James. Uh, here, you know what? I'm gonna cut a couple pieces and me and you are gonna share it, but I'm not gonna say what I think of it. Here, there's a better way to look at it right there, okay? That looks amazing. The sauce and everything. Thank you, James. Thank you. <laughs> when I did the steaks for the first time, I didn't have to finish in the oven. Because they were thinner. It has a lot of flavor. I like it. James, what kind of flavor are you tasting? The biggest flavor I'm tasting, the most obvious, is peppercorn. Yes. I do taste something else. I put green I just, peppercorns in this, which, know, which weren't I, in I last that. time. I just don't know what it is. Well, it's con it's cognac. It's which, cognac. Yeah, yeah, see, I have no idea what that yeah, is. You shouldn't. You, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't. And listen, it's totally fine to make this for, for your kid or go to a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, they don't say, oh, we like to see your ID, you know, it's all being cooked away. Oh, that's so nice alcohol. Do you remember the mushroom brandy cream sauce? Yes, that's what I'm tasting. Yeah, so yeah. cognac is, is, is a type of brandy. People want to know, is this worth making? Is it not that good? Do you like a steak a different way? This is 100% worth making. It's very good. Thank you. I just want to eat this all. You can, you can, yeah, you can have the whole steak here. This is a $16 per pound steak. We got four of these New York strips from Costco. They're prime too, they're not the choice. Prime, we got the whole pack for $60. So listen, if you wanted to splurge and make a really nice meal for your family for four, you got four steaks, the brandy, you're using like $5 worth of it, you're using a little bit of cream and a shallot, you're still under $80 for the whole meal. That's less than $20 a person. People drop more than that at McDonald's, okay? This is very good, but like, I'm being a little biased. I'm very hungry right now. Yeah, he, where, where'd you just get back from? Tell them. 
basketball practice. Mm. I made the school team. He was so happy that he made the school team. And Tara and I are so happy too. So is his sister, who, who never appears. But you might not be seeing the taste tester as much because of that. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be here. All right, what does it get, James? This gets a solid 9.9. 9.9, I am wow. rounding up to a 10, <laughs> okay? Mm. Mm hmm. I think he likes it.